Hello, and welcome back to Epileptic Disorders Roadmap to EEGs. In this module, we will discuss normal variance and is a follow-up module to normal variance part one. In this module, we will cover non-epileptiform sharp transients, spiky fluctuation of the background activity, posterior slow waves of youth, temporal slow of the elderly, slow fused transients, slow notched alpha variant, six hertz spike waves, and 14 and six hertz positive bursts. In this bipolar montage, we will look at non-epileptiform sharp transients, also known as spiky fluctuation of the background activity. In this bipolar montage EG, you could see sharply contoured waveforms consistent throughout the recording, as outlined by the red in the temporal and parietal regions, as well as the midline channels and the right parietal regions. There is no evolution to these sharp waves This is an average montage showing non epiform sharp transients outlined in the red circle. As you can see, sharply contoured waveforms most pronounced in the left frontal F7 and left temporal T7 region. This is considered to be a normal variant. Additionally, these sharp transients do not fulfill the criteria to be epileptiform discharges. For a more detailed discussion on interictal epileptiform discharges, please refer to the teaching module on interictal epileptiform discharges, where we discuss the six IFCN criteria. In this bipolar montage EEG of a 10-year-old boy, we will talk about posterior slow waves of youth. In preschool age kids, ages three to five years, the train of posterior alpha waves are frequently interrupted by admixed slow waves, mostly in the range of 1.5 to 4 hertz, extending from the occipital into the posterior temporal and less impressively into the parietal regions. These admixed slow waves fused with overriding alpha are called posterior slow waves of youth. Posterior slow waves of youth react to eye opening and closing, as does the PDR or algorithm. In the age range from 6 to 12 years, posterior slow waves of youth can also be seen. This pattern also consists with wave form activity in the range of delta and theta frequency, often a variable form, lasting from 0.35 to 0.5 seconds or longer without any consistent periodicity. Alpha waves are almost always intermingled or superimposed. From this EEG, you can see posterior slow waves of youth as arrhythmic 1.5 to 4 hertz, slowing maximal over the right occipital region with superimposed alpha waves lasting for 5 seconds. This is highlighted in red circle. This is the same EEG of our 10-year-old patient showing posterior slow waves of youth in the average montage. From this EEG, you could see arrhythmic 1.5 to 3 hertz slow activity with maximal amplitude over the O2 and O1 channels with superimposed alpha activity lasting for about 5 seconds. Note the lack of rhythmicity and lack of evolution making this a normal variant. In this bipolar montage EEG, we will discuss slow notched alpha variant. At times, harmonics or subharmonics of the background rhythm are seen. When this occurs, the resultant appearance is of a rhythm that is twice as fast or half as fast as the awake background. A slow alpha variant has an apparent frequency that is about half that of the awake background. These harmonics will often have a notched appearance as if many of the waves are simply being cut in half, but only partly so. This alpha variant is reactive to eye opening and closure. Slow alpha variant is challenging to detect and may easily be misinterpreted as occipital slowing. This tendency to misread slow alpha variant as abnormal stems mostly from the fact that slowing is such an easily recognized abnormality and all EEGers look for signs of slowing. As a generally helpful rule, it is good to remember that any time one sees occipital slowing, one must always think of slow alpha variant first, before calling the record abnormal. One should always look for a sample of normal awake background within the record. If the slowing is appropriately half the frequency of the patient's awake background, then the slowing is probably just a slow alpha variant. An additional clue can be a small notch or notches in some of the slow waves, bearing in mind that the notches can be quite subtle. In this bipolar montage, you can see slow 4 hertz posterior waves with a notched appearance that is half of the normal background, which is 8 hertz, shown in the red outline. 
closely pay attention to the normal background activity in addition to the subtle notches deemed this as a normal variant. This is an average montage of the same patient showing slow alpha variant of 4 Hz with subtle notches. This is best appreciated in the O1 and O2 channels and outlined in the red. Additionally noted are the small subtle notches as outlined by the blue circle. This patient's normal background appears to be 8 Hz as outlined in the green box and green markings. Thus, the slow variant is half that of the normal background. In this bipolar montage, we will go over slow fused transients. Slow fused transients are often seen in the setting of posterior slowing. In the preschool age EEG, ages 3 to 5 years, and in older children, ages 6 to 12, posterior slowing may show a variety of forms. Most common is the irregularly interspersed type of slow activity. These slow waves are often preceded by a sharply contoured potential that blends together with the ensuing slow wave, giving the appearance of slow fuse transients. These are important to recognize as these are commonly confused with spike in wave activity given the morphology. Slow fuse transients are also seen in the elderly subjects, where the non epileptiform sharp transient is fused with the temporal slow of the elderly. This is a bipolar montage EEG showing slow fuse transients as outlined by the red circles. Note the sharply contoured potential that blends together with ensuing slow wave, giving the appearance of slow fuse transients. This is an average montage of the same patient showing slow fuse transients prominently over the F7 and T7 channels. They are sharply contoured potential followed by a slow wave. In this bipolar montage EG, we will talk about temporal slow activity of the elderly. This is a pattern of uncertain significance, but usually not considered abnormal. It is defined as unilateral, most often on the left side, or bilateral, short runs of theta or delta activity intermixed with the background activity over the temporal regions in subjects greater than 50 years of age without clinical abnormalities. It often accentuates during drowsiness and hyperventilation. The concept of temporal slow of the elderly is an attempt to reduce the number of false positive findings on EEGs of elderly, which would be likely to occur if all focal temporal waves would be classified as abnormal. Characteristics of temporal slow wave of the elderly include age greater than 50 years, intermixed with normal background activity, if in theta range frequency you could see up to five waves in a run, and if in delta range frequency you could see only a single potential, i.e. no runs. The amplitude of temporal slow waves of the elderly are similar to the amplitude of the PDR and unilateral or bilateral, but most commonly on the left side. They may show accentuation during hyperventilation and no other abnormality in that area. In this bipolar montage EEG, you could see delta slowing over the FP1, F7 channels. In addition, you can see focal delta slowing over the T9 and P9 channels. This is an average montage EEG showing focal delta slowing over the left anterior temporal chain specifically noted in the F9, F7, T9, and T7 regions. In this bipolar montage EEG, we will go over 6 Hz spike and slow wave complex, also known as phantom spike and wave. This is considered a normal variant. The spike in this pattern has a strong positive component, but the entire wave complex looks in general like a miniature reproduction of the 3 Hz spike per second of childhood absence epilepsy. Because of the positive spike component, it is stressed the similarity to the 6 Hz component of the 14 and 6 Hz positive spike burst and reported a transition from the former to the latter with deepening drowsiness. This is usually a pattern of adulthood, but may also occur in adolescents and children. About 50 to 60 percent of the patients suffer from indubitable epileptic seizures, mostly generalized tonic-clonic seizures. The remainder show a history of syncopal attacks, post-traumatic states, or psychiatric problems. The 6 Hz spike wave complexes is an uncommon but not rare pattern. The discharge may be recorded in waking state, drowsiness, and light non-REM sleep. Light drowsiness appears to be the optimal recording condition. There is a particular emphasis on the distinction between frontal and occipital maximum. In males, WAM, waking, record, high in amplitude, anterior, 
males and in females fold. Females occipital low in amplitude drowsy record is a particular mnemonic that is used to describe and emphasize the distinction between frontal and occipital maximum in males and females respectively. This bipolar montage EEG outlined in the red circle shows 6 hertz spike and slow wave complexes in a 35 year old male and note the anterior location of the activity. This is an average montage showing the same EEG in a 35 year old male patient. Note the high amplitude 6 hertz spike and slow wave complex that appear to be maximal in the anterior regions as outlined by the red circle. In this bipolar montage EEG, we will go over 14 and 6 hertz positive bursts, which are bursts of arc-shaped waves that most commonly occur at 14 and or 6 hertz. They are generally seen over the posterior temporal and adjacent areas of one or both sides of the head during sleep. The sharp peaks of its component are positive with respect to other regions. The amplitude of these bursts are generally below 75 microvolts. The 14 and the 6 component may be observed independently. The 6 hertz component prevails in early childhood and adulthood, while the 14 hertz component is more prominent in older children and adolescents. The pattern of 14 and 6 hertz positive bursts occurs most commonly in children after age 4 and adolescents and declines in adulthood and typically occurs in deep drowsiness and very light non-REM sleep, although deep sleep might be more conducive in very young children. In this bipolar montage EEG, you can see 14 and 6 hertz positive bursts as demarcated by the black arrow and red circle in the page. Note the 0.5 to 1 second bursts of arc form 14 or 6 hertz activity with pointed positive peaks, which was recorded during light sleep and drowsiness, as noted by the vertex wave circled in blue. This 14 and 6 hertz positive bursts occurs with shifting side predominance and is maximum amplitude mostly over the posterior temporal regions. Note particularly of the 14 hertz positive bursts in the left temporal area at the time point indicated by the black vertical arrow. In the average montage, the 14 and 6 hertz positive bursts can be seen more clearly. You can see 14 hertz positive bursts occurring as 0.5 to 1 second bursts of arc form activity in the left temporal area at the time point indicated by the black vertical arrow and highlighted in yellow, specifically over T7 and P7. This is interpreted as a normal variant. In this module, we discussed normal variants part two. We talked about non-epileptiform sharp transients, spiky fluctuation of the background activity, posterior slow waves of youth, temporal slow of the elderly, slow fused transients, slow notched alpha variant, 6 hertz spike waves, and 14 and 6 hertz positive bursts.